In the 2020 NBA Draft Lottery, the Minnesota Timberwolves moved up in the draft for the first time in franchise history, miraculously moving all the way up to the number one overall pick. Just the Timberwolves luck, however, the top of this draft class appears to be the weakest in quite some time. There is no clear consensus number one overall pick, and the players at the top of the draft board do not necessarily fit the Timberwolves current build and don't appear to be transcendent enough talents to ignore how bad those fits are. So naturally this has led to a lot of discussion around the possibility of the Wolves trading this pick. So the focus of this video will be on the trade possibilities for the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft. James Johnson and Jake Lehman, just so you know, it's nothing personal but your contracts add up very nicely. And it's not that I don't like you, it's just that your numbers make it work in basically every trade I projected. So it's not that I wanna get rid of you, but to make these trades work, you have to, and both of you fit into basically every trade I did. Another major factor in a lot of these trades is the addition of Jarrett Culver as a potential trade sweetener. Culver is a polarizing player amongst Wolves faithful, and for a full player profile breakdown on Jared Culver, check out the video I did on his rookie season on my channel. But for now, let's get into the trades. I've broken them into three categories, swing for the fences, low balls, and moderate options. We'll start with the swing for the fences. The Minnesota Timberwolves received Bradley Beal. The Washington Wizards received the 2020 first overall pick, James Johnson, Jarrett Culver, Jake Lehman, and Minnesota's 2023 first round pick. The Wizards will not be good next year. It looks like they're going to take another shot at Bradley Beal and John Wall, but nothing gives me any confidence it's going to get them anywhere better than the 8th seed as that's basically been their ceiling in the past. So eventually it seems like Washington's going to need to blow it up and why not cash in now and get a number one pick out of it. They could potentially jumpstart their rebuild by taking LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards at the number one pick and give themselves a future player to build around. I don't see this happening as the Wizards for whatever reason seem really committed to having Beal and Wall run it back yet again. In addition to that, they could probably get a better return if they felt like shopping Beal as they could get somebody who is already a proven prospect as opposed to a seemingly uncertain number one overall pick. The Minnesota Timberwolves receive Ben Simmons and Mike Scott. The Philadelphia 76ers receive the 2020 number one overall pick Chris Paul and James Johnson and the Oklahoma City Thunder receive Al Horford, Jarrett Culver, Jake Lehman, Zaire Smith, Josh Okogie, Omari Spellman, the 17th pick in the 2020 draft, the 21st pick in the 2020 draft, and probably other picks as well. All right, let me emphasize how unlikely I think this is. It is not going to happen. It is easily the most extreme take I have in this video. That being said, there is enough logic behind it that I think I can see a reason for each team wanting to partake. But hey, that's the reason this is in the swing for the fences group. In this scenario, Philly has decided that Embiid Simmons just isn't going to work. Simmons' inability to stretch the defense allows for opponents to pack the paint and that just won't work next to an old school dominant interior force like Joel Embiid. So the stab they take at putting their team over the top and getting after that ring right now is acquiring a future Hall of Fame point guard in Chris Paul. This is the most win now move ever as Paul is far from a young man and they'd be trading away a 24 year old who is an incredible passer and all world defender. The remedy for the age issue in this is the Philly would get the number one pick in this year's draft. Could an Embiid, CP3, Anthony Edwards big three be a title team? Eh, maybe, probably. 
probably not, but hey, I'm a Wolves fan, so I want to talk myself into this trade. Uh, this trade is also predicated on OKC trading away Chris Paul, which is absolutely on the table and seems more than likely what's going to happen at this point. But what do they think they can get back? In this projection, they'd get back Young Wings, Culver, Okogi, and Smith, who all potentially fit well with Shea Gilgis Alexander. And to make the money work, they would also have to take on Al Horford. Horford's a veteran leader who could help OKC's next generation develop a winning culture. That being said, he has a massive long-term contract that's pretty albatrossy at this point. OKC would also collect a ransom of picks from the Wolves, but in this scenario, those picks are getting less and less valuable by the year, and OKC already has a ton of draft picks. Also hard to imagine Philly willingly getting 13 years older at point guard, considering uh, they would get a lot more back for Simmons uh, somewhere else in a trade. OKC could also probably do better trading away Chris Paul, but hey, I'm a Wolves fan, so I love this trade. Okay, and now for what I believe to be the low ball offers. The Minnesota Timberwolves receive Aaron Gordon and the 2020 15th overall pick, and the Orlando Magic receive the 2020 number one pick, James Johnson and Jared Culver. The way I see this trade is that both teams are somehow trading low on their assets. Aaron Gordon is an explosive player, but never seems like he'll reach his incredible potential. The number one pick seems like anything but a lock, but Orlando could acquire media superstar LaMelo Ball, which could drive viewership of their games, which is an area they struggle in. I feel like Gordon is a bit of a low ball for a number one pick, so I would have to see the Magic sending the 15th pick in this draft to make this work. And depending how Orlando feels about Markel Fultz, he could work his way into this trade as well, but I believe that is less likely. Again, I don't see this being a super viable trade as the Wolves are probably hoping to do better than Aaron Gordon for the number one pick. And if they're not going to do better than Aaron Gordon, they probably wouldn't trade so low to 15. That being said, I think the theme of trading down in the draft and taking back an asset is probably what's most likely here. Because the chances are you don't get a superstar back for the number one pick. So you, you, the Wolves are probably also hoping to maintain a decently high draft pick the minnesota timberwolves receive kevin love and maybe the number five pick and the cavaliers receive the 2020 number one pick james johnson Jarrett culver and jake layman okay i put some very wolves friendly trades in here so i've got to put a stinker in here for the wolves so you're welcome Cavs fans um so i guess i'll just preface this with this is not a good trade for minnesota our defense is already going to be a struggle, and Love is not going to help that. But honestly, with Russell and Towns, it's going to be hard to find a way out of a bad defense. Love does fit pretty well next to Russell and Towns on offense, however. Um, but the biggest issue here for me is the Love contract. He is old, and he is getting a lot of money. He makes sense on a win-now push, which the Timberwolves are pretty hell-bent on right now. But in two years, as Towns and Russell really hit their prime, Kevin Love would be 34 years old with another two years on his massive contract. The fifth pick could potentially come back, which makes this more stomachable, as it could fetch us an Obi Toppin or a Killian Hayes, but it's still hard to imagine being excited about four years of Love at max money in his mid-30s. Now for the moderate options. The Minnesota Timberwolves receive Drew Holiday and the 2020 13th overall pick. The New Orleans Pelicans receive the 2020 number one pick, James Johnson, Derek Culver, and Jake Lehman. New Orleans is a football town, but can you imagine the national media attention that Zion Williamson and LaMelo Ball would draw? It would be a circus. Drew Holiday is on the trade block, and that's been rumored for years, but it seems almost inevitable at this point. The Wolves need a good perimeter defender who can be a secondary ball handling option, so Drew is like literally the perfect human for our current fit. That being said, he's old. The Pelicans are looking to send Drew out for someone whose window pairs well with Ingram and Zion, and 
boy oh boy would a ball zion pick and roll sound remarkable i like this deal uh, but my primary concern is again the age of drew holiday and how little contract he would have left if he chose to opt out we would only have him for a single season before he could potentially opt out and into free agency if he did that however it would leave the wolves with cap space going into a pretty decent free agent class uh, and well, Minnesota is obviously not a free agent destination, potentially Towns and Russell could help that cause. I don't think this trade balances the two key factors the Wolves need to look for in this trade, which is having a good asset come back and retaining a high pick. I don't think Drew is good enough for us to settle for as low as the 13th pick. The 13th pick isn't high enough for us to settle for somebody like Drew Holiday, whose contract and window don't match our window. The Minnesota Timberwolves receive Zach Levine. The Chicago Bulls receive the 2020 number one overall pick, James Johnson and Jared Culver. The Bulls don't look like winners and they are stuck in a cycle of going all in for the playoffs and then stinking it up. And they look like they're gonna take another run at mediocrity this year. The Bulls have been in a perpetual rebuild and maybe what they need to jumpstart their rebuild is the number one pick like LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards. Like the Washington deal, this requires the Bulls to be bought in on the potential of rebuilding around whoever the number one overall pick would be. Honestly, this trade does make quite a bit of sense to me. The Bulls would go from a bad team with a disgruntled star to a bad team with the number one pick at the start of a rebuild. And Levine slots in well with Towns and Russell. Towns and Levine are often supportive of each other on social media and their strong relationship could mean this is a deal the players would be pulling for. Towns, Russell, and Levine would be a certified big three and would likely produce one of the best offenses in the NBA. Plus, all three players are in the same age range and their windows line up well. The big question, of course, would be defense, but hey, for the Wolves, that is simply the reality we are going to live with. There are a lot of mouths to feed and a lot of shots to get to all three of these guys, and it'd be a tough balance for any coach to tell Zach Levine he's going to go from the number one option for the last couple years in Chicago to the second or potentially third option here. That being said, if the players did like each other enough, I can see it working. So to be honest, there is some pretty whack trades in this video, and also to be honest, it's probably the toughest video I've made yet. Uh, the uncertainty of the value of the number one pick makes this really tough to project, and tough to find a good deal for. So my heart goes out to Gerson Rosas, who actually has to try to find a good deal around this pick, while well, guys like me can throw around names like Bradley Beals and Ben Simmons, it's completely unrealistic. There's always the chance that we keep the pick, take a LaMelo ball, and then trade it during free agencies like the Cavaliers did with Andrew Wiggins a few years ago. So even past draft night, the possibility of a trade is not over. So Wolves fans, if you have any other possible trades, leave them in the comments. Uh, it's really fun to think about because somehow the possibilities are somehow non-existent, but also limitless so it's pretty fun to kick around some names and try to match some contracts in the trade machine stay lit and thanks for watching